Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today, very excited to check out Crazy Eggs from Happy Bow Bob. This is for two to four players, age is seven plus. It'll take about 15 minutes to play. And in Crazy Eggs, you're going to be trying to get five of these eggs tucked in various different parts of your body. If you're able to do that, then you will trigger the end of the game. Do yourself a happy cock a doodle do dance. And if you can do it without dropping any of the eggs, then you will be the winner of the game. But it's not going to be that easy because you're going to have to be tucking these eggs in very difficult places. And you're also going to have to perform various different actions while at the same time trying not to drop any of your eggs it's a very light simple children slash family game but is it good let's open it up i'll tell you what i think all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get instead of crazy eggs so first and foremost we have a handy dandy rule booklet i obviously printed this rule booklet off myself so take uh take what you see here with a grain of salt it's short compact it should have you up and running in no time at all with very minimal questions and honestly you're mostly just going to need this section right here which will tell you what the different uh faces on the die do and where the different places on your body you're going to be tucking the eggs because in this game what you're going to do is you're going to try to have five of these eggs tucked in different locations of your body if you can get five of them tucked and get up and do a dance do like the happy cockadoodle do dance then you will be the winner of the game so let's go over the components then let's get to the gameplay so first obviously yeah really cool box it comes in an egg carton there you go uh <clears throat> you're going to get 11 of these eggs which are regular eggs they're uh Pretty nice, plasticky. Then you're gonna have one kind of much heavier egg, and this is the tiebreaker egg. It counts as one regular egg for scoring, so if you have uh, four eggs in this, then you have the five. But if there's a tie at the end of the game, whoever has the blue egg is going to be the winner of the game, assuming they're part of that tie. Next, you're gonna have two die right here. You're gonna have a red die and a blue die. Blue die is gonna tell you where you should be tucking your eggs, and the red die is going to tell you what you have to do in order to earn an egg, or in the case of the blues, to not lose one. One of your eggs. So how does it work? Well, <clears throat> when you first start the game, you're going to take an egg, you're going to roll the dice, and you're going to tuck that egg wherever it says. So for this particular instance, you'd have to tuck it underneath your chin, which is really kind of difficult. Then the next person's going to go. Uh, everyone has one egg now tucked, and you start the game. First person's going to put an egg right here, and they're going to roll this red dice like so. There's going to be a couple different faces you're going to see on this red die. So if this shows up, the first player who must shout uh, cock a doodle do, the first person to do that is going to grab the egg and they'll be able to take it next the players must take the egg on the egg stand so the first person to take the egg physically off the egg stand will then get it uh the first person to get up and shout uh disco and do a disco dance which is what this one with the disco ball is uh they get it and the players must take the action die so this one you actually have to grab the die you cannot grab this die you have to grab this die and the first person to do it is gets the egg then they proceed to roll it and tuck it wherever they want now the two blue faces are slightly different these are all about not losing your eggs <clears throat> so for instance on this one uh you have to put one of your hands on the egg uh, the last person to get their hand on the egg stand is going to lose an egg this one you have to put your your mouth to your or your lips to your mouth and go Hush. last person to do that once again going to lose an egg and then it moves on to the next player's turn so some turns you will have most of the turns four out of six you're going to have people will be grabbing eggs uh two with two out of six times people are going to be losing eggs the other thing is if you ever cannot accomplish a goal like an egg just happens to fall then it is out and it goes back into the box which makes it very very complex uh, but that's what you're going to do. So let's talk about the different places you're going to be tucking eggs. So first we have, you know, in, in that little area right there. Next we have uh, on your chin, which is terrible. We have this one right here. Under the chin, that one's between the neck and shoulders, excuse me. That one, you can pick any of the things <clears throat> in your armpit and between your knees. So those are the five different locations where you are going to be tucking egg. First person to get five of those, stand up and do a cock a doodle do dance, will be the winner of Crazy Eggs. Also, in the off scenario uh, where you are completely out of eggs and no one has five, then everyone has to get up and do that same dance. If any of the eggs fall, then you continue on to the game. If not, then you just have, you go through normal tiebreaker rules. Whoever has the most eggs at the end, though, is going to be the winner of Crazy Eggs. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, crazy eggs from Happy Bow Bob. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, yeah, we're going to start with the cons. Um, I'm just going to start off and say I don't like this game that much. I think it is okay. I don't think it's a bad game. I just think it's an okay game, maybe okay plus. 
And there's a lot of different reasons why. So first and foremost, this is not a party game. I want to just immediately take that out of the equation. This is a children slash family game. It only goes two to four players, which is very unfortunate because a game like this is sort of a party game, but when you only cap it at four players, eh, immediately not a party game. Also, the kids didn't have fun playing this. The target demographic for this market, uh, which are kids, obviously, did not really enjoy themselves. And I played it with, I think, four or five different kids in my classroom, ranging from age six to ten, and none of them were particularly wowed by this game. And there's a variety of different reasons. First, it's a very difficult game. It is very hard to tuck all these eggs in various different spots, but then at the same time, grab the dice, roll the dice, do the actions, do this, do that. If you drop the eggs, well, guess what? You lose those eggs. And the games took way longer than we were hoping they would or expecting they would because people just kept dropping eggs. Also, I, I want to get into sanitary talk here as well. Kids are gross. If you have kids, you know this. Kids are gross, especially when they're sweaty. And kids tucking things under their armpits, and kids tucking things right here, and kids tucking things uh, just all different places, they start to get sweaty, and the eggs started to get sweaty, and it was really kind of gross. Now, that being said, it was in particular two kids who got sweaty, and it just made it kind of gross for everybody else. But, you know, that's still something that I need to mention with the downside of the game. Uh, very light, very simple, very repetitive. You're going to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, there will be many times you're going to drop the eggs on accidents as you're trying to, you know, put your hand out super fast to cover something up or go hush or do this. Or... <sighs> it just didn't wow us at all. And I was really... I was really disappointed because I was very excited for this game. When I saw it, I was like, I love the packaging. I love the components. I love the simple rules. Uh, it's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. Like, once you know the different die faces, this is a game that no problem kids could play by themselves. So it is the kind of game where as long as you teach your children the game well, it could be a children's game in addition to a family game. But it just didn't work out the way we were expecting it to. And I tried and tried and tried. I think I played this about six or seven times. And it just did not work as intended, unfortunately. And uh, none of the kids were like, can we play it again? Can we play it again? Which is normally, like kids, the kids in my class love these sort of dexterity games. Like Funky Chicken and Happy Salmon and anything that involves like slapping and moving fast. Or, you know, spot it where you have to like find things fast. They love this style of game. So I thought this was really going to go over well with the dancing and the silly stuff and the shenanigans. And no, it did not. It went over very, very poorly. But, moving on to the pros... While I'm telling you, I think this is an okay game. And I think uh, okay to good. I think that's where the range is I'm going to be putting this. I don't think it's a great game, a spectacular game. I don't think it's a bad game either. It just... Well, this is pros. So we talk about pros. I think this is a try before you buy game with kids. Like, if you're at a convention or if someone happens to have this, you should try it with your kid. And if they have fun with it, then absolutely go with it. But the kids in my class did not. But it has... It has the pedigree. It looks like a fun game. The components are great. The artwork's great. The rules are simple. The kids understood the rules. Like, everything about this game should have worked, and it just didn't work for me and my kids in my class. So, with that being said, maybe it might work for you. And if it does, let me know in the comments below. If you've played this game, and let me know, did you have success with the game? Uh, but, continuing on with the pros... Pretty much everything I just said. I like the components. The big chunky dice are nice. The eggs are really stinking cool. I do like how the tiebreaker blue egg works. And it's a it's a fun challenge when that blue egg finally comes out. Because let me tell you, it is really hard to keep this egg. It's, it's somewhat heavy. Uh, it's probably about a pound where you want it to be. And that that is kind of fun. And it's... I'll put it like this. I think the best way I could put this is the first 10 to 15 minutes of this game were fun. They were very enjoyable. And then we started to see the bad stuff, and the game started to stretch out. The eggs started to fall, and that is really what detracts from the game. So maybe if you house ruled it down to like, you only need three or four eggs to win. Maybe if you got rid of the or the original rule about having to tuck the egg at the beginning, and you only went down to three eggs or something. I don't know. Maybe that would help fix the game, uh, since I do think it needs some fixing a little bit. But who knows? There you go. That is crazy eggs from Happy Bow Bow. Next question, though, am I keeping it? And the answer is. No, normally it's the kind of game that I would absolutely keep in my classroom, but I didn't have success with it in my classroom. My my son, he wasn't the biggest fan of it. He's six, so crazy eggs, happy bow bob, definitely one that was underwhelming, disappointing, but hey, might be your cup of tea. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, click on that little Amazon link down below. Buy anything on Amazon, throw us a couple pennies towards Bowers Game Quarter. Really does help support the channel in a big way. And in the comments below, let me know, have you played Crazy Eggs? Because 
I know there was another game with eggs that came out with Haba a couple of years ago. Is that this game? Is this like a rebranding of that game? Or is that a completely different game? And have you played either of those games? Let me know, because I'm very curious. Because I do like the premise of this game. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.